Good morning, guys, on Frequented World. I got a request from a viewer to um, show us what happens if you try to start and drive the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV if you're still plugged in. Their greatest fear is they're going to jump in and do this. Well, we've all done it. You walk right past your car, it's charging, you know that, it's early in the morning, whatever, and you get in and go. Well, I'll show you what happens. So there you see the car is plugged in. It is fully charged. Let's go for a drive. Brake off. Charging lid is open. Car is in drive, will not go in drive. I'm due for an oil change, that's what that is. Charge cable is connected, we cannot put it in drive. We are going nowhere. So not only can you see that you get a warning for the charging lid is open, but you cannot put the car in gear when the cable is plugged in. You can drive away with the lid open, I have done that. So I just found something much more annoying than the PHEV battery uh, status, and that is the size of this stupid opening for the windshield washer fluid. Just topped it up here, and I'm betting that half of the jug is on my garage floor right now. That's ridiculous. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, here we are in the car, guys. Today we're going to do another video and we are going to go on a long drive. This is going to be an unrealistic range test. Last week we did the realistic, how far can we go following the speed limits for in town between 50 and 70 kilometers. Today we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to cheat. We're going to do 40 kilometers. We're going to do 50 kilometers. We're going to coast as far as we can. If there's nobody behind us, we are going to go as far as we can coasting. So it's an unrealistic test, but we've got a full battery and I wanna see how far can I go if I baby it and drive like my grandfather. And it's a legitimate thing. People wanna know that and some people actually drive like that all the time. So this week we're gonna find out how far can we go. Okay, I charged the car last night, guys. At 11 o'clock it was fully charged, so I unplugged it. So today we're showing 95.5% and 36.3 amp hours. So. Maybe I should have left it plugged in all night. Okay, so we've reset the tripometer. We got 10,138 kilometers and a guesstimate of 50 kilometers. I just wanted to mention, guys, that this test is going to be repeatable, this route that I've got. And what we're going to do next week is we're going to do the same route again, but we're not going to use B0. So we're going to actually use braking level 2 um, and the paddles every time we need to slow down and whatnot. But we're going to run on braking level 2 and see if we go further using B0 versus B2. So that'll be the second part of the test and that'll be coming next week. Okay, so I've only gone one kilometer and uh, checked the watchdog and it already disconnected. So I reconnected it. Um, I don't think it's gonna stay connected, but we'll, we'll get what data we can. I was hoping that we could keep it running the whole time so I could show you guys the average speed, uh, which is probably gonna be somewhere around, I don't know, between 40 and 50 kilometers. Just to show you guys as well, um, somebody mentioned to me that the slower you go, the closer your speedometer will be to uh, the true speed. When we know, when we're doing 100 on the highway, according to our car speedometer, we're actually only doing 94. We've already done tests on that. But here it's showing we're doing, you know, 55, somewhere around there. And if we look on the watchdog, it's showing us yeah, 52. Okay, so for this test, what I'm realizing, you know, 10 minutes into this, I'm doing 50 kilometers an hour. 50 kilometers an hour is bloody slow. See this guy walking on the sidewalk here? Oh, take a good look. It's going to take us a while to catch up to him. See that? We just barely passed him. Okay, now we got a real test. There's a guy on a bike. Oh, and I got to stop for the light. That's right, you better ride. I'm gonna show you guys the sign. We are in a 40 zone now, which I planned. See it? There it goes. 
and I, um, I'm actually doing 50 in the 40 and I got about eight cars behind me and this is one of those roads that it goes around the waterfront and avoids the overpass in town so there's no once you're on it you've got two kilometers you're stuck on it and um, I got somebody right on my bumper angrily glaring at me but we are finishing this test and we're doing it my way I've also made sure the wind is at my back for this test today and we are rolling downhill for 96% of this route and if you believe that <laughs> Okay, so we've come 13 kilometers. We're doing 50 kilometers an hour. And our gasometer is showing 38 kilometers to go. And I should have mentioned that the heating and cooling system is off. I also wanted to mention charging. A lot of people are asking, you know, on my commute, should I be using charge? No, I don't think you should, guys. The charge button means that the engine is working harder. So you're burning more fuel to charge. The only time that I would suggest putting some charge in is on, if you're on the highway and you are completely out of battery. And you know that coming up ahead, you know, you got to go through a little small town and it's uh, five or seven kilometers through the town. Then absolutely push the charge button, put 10 kilometers back in your batteries and use that electric power when you're going through stop and go through these little towns. That is the only time that I would recommend using the charge button. The next best thing you can do is save some energy. So if you know you're going to hit the highway and you've still got 15 kilometers left, don't waste it. Push the save button and the car will automatically go back into hybrid mode as soon as you push save. You'll have that 15 kilometers stored for when you get to your little town that's coming up. That's the most efficient way is to save your energy and use it where it is going to be the most efficient. All right, there it is, 50 kilometers and the gasometer is still showing 11 to go. All right, guys, seeing as we're at 10,000 kilometers and six months of ownership, this is a great time to discuss um, how much money have we saved by driving this vehicle. And it's a very simple equation. In the Subaru Forester Turbo, um, I was putting in premium fuel and at about 330 kilometers, it would cost me 50 bucks. Now I'm rounding up or down a little bit. Sometimes you get a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but that's right around what would cost me $50 would be 330 kilometers. So per thousand kilometers driven in the car, it would be $150. So at 10,000 kilometers, we would be at $1,500 spent on fuel. I haven't even spent $500 on fuel yet for this car. We're at 400 and some dollars. So we've saved over a thousand dollars already in the first uh, six months of driving this vehicle. School zones are a big part of this test. School zones are 40 kilometers an hour and we're gonna hit four of them. That's called good planning. Oh, here comes a couple guys on electric scooters. Maybe we can drag race. Oh yeah, there it is guys, 63.2 kilometers and the generator just kicked on. All right, over 63 kilometers, we've got to be extremely happy with that. And the best part is that the watchdog has been running this whole time. So when we get back to the house here, we can pull up the stats and take a closer look. All right, guys, one hour and 36 minutes of torture. We were gliding for 47.2%. Okay, as I stated, this would be a unrealistic test and here is why. Our average speed was 40.4 kilometers per hour. Our maximum speed was 58 kilometers. So we were driving pretty ass slow. Last week we got 52 kilometers on a charge and we drove normal speeds, 50 to 70 in town, which is, you know, following the uh, posted speed limit, etc. So today with slowing down and coasting quite a bit further that lowered our average down to 40 kilometers it was a very slow painful trip but if you could do that you would gain another 10 kilometers per charge so it is possible guys not saying you want to do it i wouldn't want to do it that was a painful hour and a half um i i think there was a couple times i had to lock the doors where i pulled up to the stoplight because the guy behind me was going to get out drag me out of the car and beat me so it's not something you want to do every day but if you absolutely had to hey i'm out of gas how far can i go to get to the next next station 
you know, 62 kilometers, I don't think I could get any more out of that battery. I really tried my hardest today, guys. Next week, we can do the same route again, if anybody's interested, and we'll put it on B2 braking level, and we'll just see, compare it to this week, which I drained every cell in this battery as best I could this week. So there is no doing better on the route that I chose. So if we do the same route again next week, we could try to compare it to B2 or you know, and we're still going to use the paddles when we're slowing down for lights and stop signs and things like that, which is what we did today. And we could compare it. So that could be our next video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.